QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Set Up Inventory Items. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file going through the setup process with the view drop down, the open windows list on the left hand side, company drop down, home page in the middle, maximizing that home page to the gray area. We're going to be setting up our inventory items at this point. In a prior presentation, we looked at these service items, which help us to populate the invoice and sales receipts for non-inventory services provided. Now we're looking at the inventory items, adding another level of complexity, tracking the inventory within the QuickBooks system using a perpetual weighted average system. So now they're gonna be used to help us populate the purchase orders if we have them, the bills, if we're gonna enter the bill for the purchase of the inventory or the checks, if we're gonna pay for the inventory in that format, and they're going to help us with the creation of the invoice and the sales receipts as we create the invoice and the sales receipt we're going to have to track that added component within them which will be the cost of goods sold and the inventory and the units of inventory that we'll be tracking as well and that will also add a level of complexity typically in the united states and that they're more likely to be taxable items with regards to sales tax we're also going to be thinking about when we look at our beginning balances now, we're looking at our inventory asset. And remember, we discussed that we can't just put on the books with simply a journal entry or putting into the beginning balance of inventory that 2,896 if we plan on tracking inventory in the system because we need to know the units of inventories that support that number. So we will also at this point be imagining that we want to put this number on the books and that that number is supported by our inventory unit. Now we're going to go over to our Excel worksheet. We're going to imagine this is the breakout of our inventory units. This might be something that if we're starting a new company file, we might have some information from a prior system, in which case we can generate the list of inventory units from there. Or if we just started at our company, then we might have some transactions that have been taking place before we started inputting them in to our QuickBooks system, in which case we might compile this as well in that format. When we're first starting out the setup of the inventory process, then we might have multiple different inventory units that we're using possibly from another system or that we're creating. It may be best in that instance to first put them together in some kind of worksheet such as Excel or some other spreadsheet program and then copy them over into the system within QuickBooks after that point in time, we can start to add the inventory just basically one item at a time. So here's going to be the items we're going to have. We're going to try to line up the headers here to line up with what we will see within QuickBooks so that it'll make it as easy as possible. Let's actually take a look at that first. Let's go back on over to, to QuickBooks. We're going to go to the lists drop down and then we're going to go to the item lists. This is where last time we set up our service items. I'm going to close the carrot up top. We're going to go to the items drop down or rise up. And if I was to add a new item here, and I won't actually add this one, but if I was to do this one at a time, we now are looking at the inventory items. So we're looking at the inventory. And you'll see then we have a, some more complexity with our data input. So we still have the item name here. We have the sub item if applicable, manufacturer part number if applicable. We got the description. This is the purchase description and the sales description. So now we have these two boxes here. The cost is what we purchase them for. So this is going to be what populates the bill when we enter the when we enter the bill for the purchase side of things. And then the cost of goods sold represents the account that we are going to be hitting when we actually sell the inventory with a invoice or sales receipt we could then have a preferred vendor this is who we would be purchasing the inventory from the sales description would be on this side the sales price would be what we actually sell them for so it would be a marked up higher price than the cost and then the tax is going to be is it taxable typically we're going to say yes on the inventory items we're talking sales tax here so that will help us to calculate the sales tax on the invoice and sales receipt and then the income account represents the account that we're going to be hitting for the income which would be something like a sales account inventory type of account then down below we've got the asset account which is inventory that's the account that we're going to be tracking the asset in 
and then we have the reorder point this would be if we're tracking the units of inventory how low we want the inventory to go before it's going to remind us to order more stuff we've got the uh, on hand amount this is how much we could start off with which we could help us with our beginning balances here the total value and then the as of date on the as of date it's important to use this when we first start out we're going to put the as of date as of the time period before the current year where we're going to be working in we're imagining we're going to start at january 1st 2022 therefore we're going to start with the as of date for the data input as of the end of the last period which is 12 31 2020. okay so given up but we're not going to actually enter it one by one in here instead i'm going to close this out we're going to add multiple items at the same time so we're going to go to the item rise up once again and we're going to have the add edit multiple items at the same time this is a similar worksheet that we had seen in the past but this time we're not looking service items we're looking inventory items so inventory parts items and then we got these same headers up top typically a lot more headers that we're going to be dealing with this is kind of the default so we want to line these headers up to what we have on our excel worksheet so what we need what we need in general are the item name that's going to be an abbreviated kind of name that will help us to find it more quickly hopefully and sort them in the drop down sales description is going to be what shows up on the invoice or sales receipt purchase description what shows up on the po purchase order the bill and or the check when we buy it the cost this is what we purchased them for on a unit by unit basis and the sales price this is what we sell them for on a unit by unit basis cost of goods sold is the account that we're going to expense when we enter the sales receipt or the invoice the sales account the income account that we're going to hit when we sell them the quantity on hand this is how much we currently have at this point in time on hand which is going to help us to calculate the beginning balance in the inventory account sales tax we're going to say they are taxable and then we have the as of date which is going to be the end of the prior period 12 31 21 because we're going to start this business in this accounting software on january 1st 2022 now if i was to add up if i was to add up saying multiplying out the 400 times the quantity on hand then that's going to give us our our total in terms of the cost and notice i'm not looking at the sales price but the cost that'll give us if i add this up the 2896 which adds up to our beginning balance over here the 2896 so once we enter this into the system quickbooks will increase the asset account of inventory the other side is going to go to an equity account which they're going to kind of do automatically as we enter our balances one at a time and give the supporting data to do so so now i want to i want to get these same headers lined up in the same way in quickbooks so let's go back to the start here and see if this lines up to the quickbooks so i'm going to then go to my customized columns which is going to give us our columns this is these are the columns that are currently in play these are the options we have we can adjust the order of these by taking this item and moving them up or down so the item name that's the first one then i got the sales description is my second one so we have the purchase description sales description i'd like to add the sales sub subscription and this one because there's a lot involved here it might be easier to just remove all these i'm just going to remove them and add them possibly so i can remove and remove and some of them they won't let me remove they're going to be required fields but i'll remove 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 and then remove and then i'll try to add them as we go so we got the item name and then we've got the sales description and the purchase description so i'm going to add those as we go here's the sales uh, description adding it i'm going to move it up to the second item and then the purchase description is right here so i'm going to add it on over move it up to after the sales description and then the next one i have here is the cost and then the sales price so let's see if we the cost of goods account and so on the sales tax code so we need the cost which is going to be right here i'm going to add that one increase it moving it up then the sales price i'm going to add that one and move it up move it up under the cost and then we've got the cost of goods sold account and the income account so cost of goods sold account then the income account so we got that 
that looks correct okay and then we've got the quantity on hand sales tax so then we need the quantity on hand quantity on hand i'm going to bring that over and move it up and then we've got the sales tax which is here sales tax code i'm going to move it up so we've got that and then the as of date as of date i'm going to bring that over and then add move it up and the asset account i didn't include here the asset account yeah it's after the asset account is the income account and then the asset account so it should be income account and then the asset account moving it up okay so item name sales description purchase description cost sales price cost of goods sold account income account asset account quantity on hand sales tax code as of date does that match here we're going to say then we've got going this way item name sales description purchase description cost sales price cost of goods sold account income account asset account quantity on hand sales tax code and as of date i think it does so let's try it out let's say let's say okay and now if these descriptions line up and i have multiple different things i could hopefully just copy and paste my data right into this item here and it should populate so we got our data one more time on the data this is well we went through the data i'll just see if i can copy the data taking this data control c copying it and I'm just going to try to put it right there in, in the first item, enter. And let's tab through now. So we've got the ELP, ELP description, purchase description, cost, sales price, cost of goods sold is the account that we're going to be hitting. This is coming from our chart of accounts now. That one has is there. That looks good. Sales, this is the income account when we create an invoice that will be populated. And then inventory is not in the account list. So this inventory account isn't uh, populating. So we're going to say, all right, what do I have then? There's an inventory asset. So it's named slightly different, which is why they couldn't figure it out. Inventory is not in the account list. Okay, I see that. Don't do that again. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I get it. It's not there. So I'm going to change it. So if you <laughs> cancel that and then cancel and we want the inventory asset account and then it's going to do that again cancel that that's really tedious and we're going to say inventory asset and cancel that and then this is going to be an inventory asset account and then cancel that and inventory asset account there we have that okay that looks good and then we've got quantity on hand the sales tax code is tax versus non-tax so it is taxable and as of date 12 31 21 the end of last period because we're going to start on january 1st 2022 i think that's good let's try it let's save it and see what happens save it and see what happens so i'm going to say okay okay i will and then close this up and so now we've got our service items and our inventory items if i was to select one of these items now with the item drop down rise up and edit the item then it's going to go into the single population if i tab through here we got the inventory part there's the item name it's not a sub item we don't need a manufacturer's part sales or description for the purchase which is going to be on the bill or the purchase order or the check 400 cost cost of goods sold being the account it goes to when we sell it is with regards to the expense account invoice or sales receipt being the form we don't have a preferred vendor although this one would probably be epiphone then we've got the sales description that looks good and then we've got the sales price that's what's going to show up on the invoice or sales receipt for what we're selling them for they are taxable with regards to sales tax the income account then being the sales account which is an income account different than the sales revenue with the service revenue account and then the cost of goods sold is that cost of goods sold account inventory asset is our asset account that's going to increase when we purchase them decrease when we enter the invoice and then the reorder point we didn't enter a reorder point that's okay amount on hand one at the 400 so let's close it out that looks good and let's open up the carrot on the left hand side home page and let's see what would happen when we create an invoice now if i create an invoice we got those items in the item list so we can easily populate the invoice 
and it should just populate everything here for us. So if you were to think about what's going to happen when you record this transaction, then invoice is going to go up accounts receivable meaning it's going to go up by the full amount of 525 in this case other side then going to sales which is going to tell us which sales account the sales account driven by the item that we set up but it's only going to go up by the 500 it's a taxable item so we should have then the 25 uh, taxable for sales tax which is going to be increasing the sales tax payable account we also know that inventory is going to be going down it's going to be going down by the amount driven by this item, which I believe was 400, but it's not actually on the invoice. Other side going to cost of goods sold, the expense related to the sale, the difference between the sales price, 500, and the cost, which I think is 400, but not on the invoice, is the net impact on net income. It will also track the inventory items, and it will be decreasing then an inventory item that we would be selling as well. So let's close let's close that out we can also see this i'm not going to record it on the on the purchase order or the bill so if we enter let's say a bill and we were just going to purchase it and that way on the items list we would enter the item and then we can have an inventory item here this would then be increasing the inventory account as well as increase or then increasing the accounts payable if it was a bill and it would increase the unit inventory that would be increasing uh, as well for how many units we purchased tracking it on a perpetual inventory weighted average system so we have those set up we'll be using those in the future let's now go to our reports drop down company and financial take a look at the balance sheet report and if we make it as of 12 31 2 1 which is the end of last period there it is there's our 2008 96 which matches out to what we needed here 2896 in our beginning balances that it just created on its own when we entered those beginning balances in the inventory if i double click on it you'll see the transaction if we double click on that item look at the detail they just did an inventory adjustment is the type of form they they used and then if i go into it here you'll see an inventory adjustment item uh, here so the quantity and the total for the adjustment of the inventory i'm going to close that back out so there's the data the other side you can see is going to the split account for the opening balance account so just like we thought just like we were trying to explain they put it they just dumped it somewhere into the equity account which is opening balance equity so they just put the other side there now you might say well that doesn't tie out to what's on our balance sheet but once we enter all the other beginning balances everything will wash out to equity so we're just going to do it one item at a time so if we close this back out now this is as of the end of this period notice that they didn't put the other side to the equity account but they put it to an income account then it would still roll into equity by the point in time that we're starting which is going to be the cutoff period starting at january 1st 2022 so if i move this up a day then we still have the same data here and we're good to go if i look at the profit and loss reports drop down company and financial profit and loss changing the dates from 010121 to 123121 nothing's in the PL. if i was to change that to 010122 to 1231 123122 nothing in the PL at this point in time from that transaction all that quickbooks did was increase the inventory account other side got dumped into this equity account opening balance equity which isn't a proper account we'll have to adjust out of there but the equity in total should all wash out and be okay and then we'll just adjust the balance to the proper equity account.